YouTube. What's happening? It's your boy Penny LS1 checking in for another video. Y'all already see what's going on. I'm still working on these rear disc brake conversion. I've got everything pretty much mocked up. As you can see, I got the caliber bracket and the calibers painted. I shot it with single stage Summit Racing Performance Red. The same red that I painted the valve covers with. Got my proportion valve ready to go on. That's a disc to disc. I bought a new, um, what do you call it? The pinion, different, the, the differential shaft lock bolt. I bought a new one of those because I've been taking this one on and off. And also got, I bought this too. You'll need this too when you're bleeding the brakes with a brand new proportion valve. Otherwise, you'll have issues with, with fluid not getting to the rear. Ask me how I know. So we'll swap that out later. But right now, what I want to show y'all, I ran into a little situation. As you can see, I have the pads on. So put the pads on. I was getting ready to put the caliber on. Actually, I did put it on. I took it back off because I, I heard some grinding. So come to find out, if you can see right there. See that right there? You can see how close the rotor is to the actual caliber bracket. Now, if you look on the back side, look at all that space. See that? The space between here and here. So, as y'all know, you want to have it, as, you want the rotor centered as close as you can get, get it to being centered in this bracket for even pad wear. And also, like I said, it's actually rubbing on the bottom. So, this is a no-go. This look, it's hard to even turn. So, I figured out what to do. So, let me take this axle back out. That's the part I really hate because I got to take that boat back out. <laughs> so let me get everything broke apart. I'm going to show you how to fix this. You may or may not run into this issue. I've only seen one guy mention it in all the videos that I watched. Maybe two. And one for sure is uh, GTS Designs. He's got that very long video, part one and two. I didn't watch part two when I first was doing my research. He mentions it in part two. So let me break it apart. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then I'll show you. I mean, I'm going to show you what I'm going uh, to use to fix it. But as you can see, it's, it's too close for comfort. It's too close for comfort. Look at that. Oh, man. All right. All right. We got everything torn down. So basically what we need to do, we need to figure out a way to get this backing plate moved out far enough. To where our spacing on the caliber bracket is almost as centered as we can get it as a relation to the rotor so what i did was i went to the hardware store and picked up some washers and these are our 16th of an inch thick i've already test fitted i did this on friday today's sunday so i put one washer on each boat put the plate on it did move it out we did get a little bit more space, but it was still off centered. So I said, well, hell, I bought I bought enough to put two on each one. So I tried two, which will give us a total of an eighth of an inch spacing, pushing that bracket outward towards the street, if you will. And that seemed to work. Now, while I was doing that or while I was at the hardware store, I went ahead and bought I just bought two boats to test fit to see if we're going to need to replace all the stock boats because of the spacing that we're going to be picking up. So. Um, I'll put I'll put two of these on. Well, actually, I'll just put one of these on, and then I'll put the stock ones on. And I'll let you guys be the judge of it. Actually, I didn't even try it with the stock bolts. I just put two of these on to hold it in place. These stuck out a little bit far. Far. I keep saying far. These stuck out a little bit far, even with the spacer. So I think we may be we may be good, but we'll see. I'll let you guys be the judge if you want to use the stock bolts, or if you think you'll need to get a longer boat. So let me get everything put back together, and then. Uh, I'll show you how close we are on center on that uh, the bracket versus compared to the rotor. Okay, I think we might be all right. So let's first check the spacing. 
I can get it in there. All right. So we're no longer touching the rotor right here. And it's almost, let me grab a light. Hold on, y'all. Okay, so now you can see. So you can see how much space we got now. So the pad is actually touching the rotor, and there's still space between the, the bracket, which is this piece right here, and that piece down there. And in the back, it might be actually closer. Hold on, let me move the light over. It might be, I think we got more room in the front, but we don't have this little notch in the back, so that's going to work for me. It's the pads are touching because because <laughs> they're obviously they're new pads, but we're not grinding like we were. As you can probably see this line right here, that was what was grinding up against this. Yeah. So let's see from the back side. So you can see that it's almost centered. If not as close as yeah, that's pretty close. If y'all see what I'm looking at, the space between here and here on the rotor. It's almost almost perfect so we're gonna roll with that now let me show you the boat so i'll let y'all make the call i'll tell you what i'm gonna do but i'm gonna sh show it to you first let me get up under here if i can get a good angle okay so this top one right here let me focus it real quick hold on y'all okay so this top boat right here this the new one you see how far it sticks out from the boat? I mean, from the nut. And that's with the two spaces on it. So that's plenty. But then if you look at the bottom one, that's one of the, hold on, that's one of the factory ones. Let me grab my stick light over here. Bear with me, y'all. That bottom one, you see it? That's the factory nut and boat. It's got, it's got meat, but it's pretty much bottomed out, so I think I'm going to go ahead and replace all of them. The only problem is those boats were $3 a piece, so I need, I got two, so I need six more to make eight. So, but yeah, I think we'll, I think we definitely will need to replace those with longer boats. So, and while I'm under here, I did go ahead and uh, get the new, the new um, bands and these, uh, clamps so i got the lines hooked up i just got to put the caliber on put the banjo boat on and get it fastened to the caliber let me get up under off from under here so i just need to put all that back together the, the uh put the banjo boat on and put the caliber back on we'll put the banjo well you know what i'm not gonna bleed it just yet but i'm gonna put it on and then i'm gonna go ahead and put the uh I'm gonna go on the other side and go ahead and put the proportion valve, the new proportion valve on. And like I said, that is a disc to disc. They, I mean, they look identical. You can't tell by looking at them if it's a disc drum, disc, disc. It's all internal. It's all internal pressure. That's the only difference. So you can't tell by looking at them. I'll take the other one off and I'll show you that it looks exactly like this one. So, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this buttoned up. And like I said, those clamps are temporary until I get, I'm, I'm actually about to buy a welder. I'm going to go with a flux core MIG. That way I can just, I can, I can weld small stuff myself and not have to worry about having a, a, a tank. It'll just be flux core, but that should be good. But of course I got to take that off and I'll have to clean up, clean up the metal, get it prepped for, for welding. So I may not do that anytime soon. Like I said, this will work. I'm going to go ahead and bleed the brakes so I can get the car back on the ground and have it rolling. And, um, cause what I'll probably do is turn it around pull it in that way I'll be able to have this part of the car that way where we'll have more light so while I'm still working on everything back here and um, if you're not following me on Instagram do that because I've actually posted some some shorts or some yeah some reels discussing the parking brake situation I'm still working on that I've already got the the past the uh, driver side figured out now I just have to come over here and uh, work on this side so I will make an in-depth video on that once I get it figured out and it works. I don't even want to publish anything full length. I just was doing a little shorts just showing everybody what my ideas was. But once I get it to work, I will definitely let you guys know. Um, I've only There's only a couple of people that I know that actually have theirs hooked up. But one guy said that, I mean, most everybody's saying all you got to do is cut this end off and put the right end on. I mean, that's cool. 
problem is I couldn't find the end. <laughs> you can get the universal one from, I think, Willwood sells the Clevis and um, uh, Willwood and whatever. the I can't think of the other company. But for the price of that, you might as well just get the whole new cable. The only difference is you won't have to take this cable out to just cut it and weld that in on or clamp it on. So let me get this caliber back on. I'm going to jump over to the other side and pull off the proportion valve. And I'll show you comparison <laughs> to the new one and how they, they you can't tell the difference from a disc to disc or a disc to drum just by looking at them. All right, man, I ain't been under here in a minute. So anyway, that's the, the stock proportion valve. It's got that little shield on there, which also is a bracket that used to hold the gear indicator rod, but I took that out. So keep that bracket on there because I think it acts also as a heat shield. As you can see, it's right next to the header. So, so I'm going to take those two. They look like, what y'all think, 13 mil? Those two, the two bolts to hold their bracket on. And then the lines are different sizes. Because this back line is a 9 16 for the rear. I think that might be a 13 or 14 uh, line wrench. Make sure you lose a <laughs> make sure you use a line wrench when you're taking these fittings off the brake lines because if you if you round them over, you're not gonna be able to get them tight and sealed and you're gonna have to end up replacing it because you don't really want to do a patch job on the hard line. And then if you if you have to cut it, then you, it's gonna be too short to even reach where it needs to go. So let me get these off. I forgot that actually, I forgot I did have the stock one. So that one looks a little different than the aftermarket, but the aftermarket disc to drum looks the same as the disc to disc. So let me get this off and then we'll go ahead and slap this, the new one on. All right, so we got it off, man. I forgot how tight it was up under there, man. It's hard to get to get your line wrenches on there to loosen them little fittings. So you got two and the, the, these two right here those would come in from the well these two in the middle those two come in from the master cylinder and then that one right there goes to the driver's side front the bottom goes to the passenger side front and then obviously this is the back so exact same thing here you got your top two you got that front that front and then the rear so i'm gonna take this out i'm gonna put this tool in there this is going to allow me to bleed without this thing triggering and shutting off uh, pressure to the rear, which that's what it's designed to do. This is, as you know, it's just uh, the light. So if you did lose pressure to either the front or the rear, it, this pin will ground itself because the thing in here is going to slide. It'll ground and then it'll cut your brake light. I'll let you know something's wrong with your brakes. So in order to prevent that from happening while you're bleeding, because there's no fluid in here now, you're supposed to put this in there. And this is a solid pin the one that's in here actually goes up and down so this will hold that slider in place while we're bleeding and we should be good to go so i'm gonna go ahead and mount that on so i still need to get uh waiting on my new boots for the caliper pins i ordered all this stuff at the same time but for whatever reason that one didn't ship so i think it said tuesday so once i get the boots on the caliper pins then i'll go ahead and button everything up and bleed the brakes but i already saw fluid coming out the rear <laughs> So looks like it's working, even though I ain't even bled it. I guess when I jacked the car up and once I cracked that line, air got in there and it, it pushed fluid out on the driver's side rear. So at least we know those new lines are working. I don't see any leaks yet back there, but we'll definitely find out when I get ready to bleed it. Because I'm going to be doing a one man bleed using this, uh, this pump bleeder right here. I did a video. I think I did a video. No, I did a short. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to this one. This allows you to bleed it by yourself. Obviously, you just pump it up. And then it comes with this adapter. If you have the same master cylinder that I have, the adapter that comes with it will fit. If not, you're gonna have to source an adapter. This is a quick, quick release. This uh comes off. Let me see. You just pull this back. It's kind of like a yeah. See, it just comes off. It looks like that so if the one that comes with this doesn't fit your master cylinder you'll have to source it but i did get that on amazon so i'll put a link to that one in the description let me go ahead and put this on here and show y'all what it looked like okay so we got the new proportion of valve mounted i just need to put the bolts and the bracket back on and mount it to the frame man getting all them lines on there is a bi let me tell you i, I forget I, I can't remember last time i was under here messing with this but i think we got it so we'll go ahead and get everything tightened up. We'll put the bracket back on 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and start the bleeding process. I'm waiting on one more thing for the rear. I'm trying to think. Oh my um. Well, no, I can go ahead and do that. I was gonna say I was because I'm waiting on my the boots for the uh, for the caliper slide pins, but I can go ahead and bleed the calibers, and then when those boots come in, I don't have to un I don't have to take off the the banjo bolt to do that. So so we'll go ahead and do that, and I'll show you all the process with that power bleeder. So we'll do we'll get it set up on on my next video. We'll go ahead and get it bleeded, check for leaks. We'll get it pressurized. We'll check for leaks, tighten up any fittings, and then we'll go from there. So if you're not already, please hit that like comment subscribe click the notification bell check me out on youtube or oh, this is youtube ain't it <laughs> check me out on instagram and tiktok at penny ls1 let me know if you have any questions i'll try to answer whatever i can if not i'll point you in the right direction or i'll try to point you in the right direction but we should have full disc brake stopping power here shortly until next time penny ls1 holla at your boy